let's finish the receivers up here before we go to the running backs on this team and what's going on. Let's let's finish up with Hogan, the, the probably the only other guy who's you have to actually spend a little bit of money on to to put on your team. Yes. Any interest in um, a little Dorset before you? I mean, yeah. I mean, I threw him in there with the C Pats and the mm-hmm. and the Brits okay. and the and the Decker. I mean, yeah, sure. Like I said, he's been around for a little while, so at least he knows what's going on um, as far as the offense and and knowing where to be and what the Patriots expect of him. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I'm sure any of those guys. And Dorsett's a fast guy. Why can't Dorsett play a Cooks role? A first round talent. Right. I mean, Whether that's not a should, dumb move. Right. But. Right. Well, that happens all the time. <laughs> he probably shouldn't have been taken in the first round, but he was a stud. Obviously. What the, were you about to say about Hogan? C Pat. And and Dorset Decker all free, which is why we just spent that amount of time right. talking about him. So Hogan's the only one you're gonna have to spend money on. He's at currently in July ADP for DLF. He's at eighty eight. Um, obviously that number is probably gonna go up some. I don't know how much of a bump. I'm, I would consider like at least a half a round, if not a full round. Yeah, here coming soon. Um, so basically, just to recap what you were getting from Hogan last year, he played in nine games. Week one gets off to a slow start, three three and a half points. Um, then he posts 18.8, uh, 22.8, 17.0, 21.4. He's the wide receiver of five through five weeks. Yeah. I mean, Stood. people get off to hot starts and everything, but but Hogan can obviously get it done. The thing with Hogan is, is he does get injured because he's try so damn hard Mm -hmm. on it you know he's always laying out he's always doing this he's always you know it's always a little bit of something but i guess my biggest thing with hogan was is like the adp's up a little bit right now and it's going to continue to rise but i can tell you that i'm you as well we both owned hogan in multiple leagues because that was one of the biggest guys we were pounding the table for last year was saying hogan's absolutely free Mm -hmm. there's no reason not to have him on all your teams just like we're telling you about eric decker and these other guys that are free right now it's no secret um (laughs) <laughs> but I couldn't get anything for, no. for Chris Hogan. Nobody would give me anything even remotely like disrespect. Just being like throwing me back, just trash. I right. couldn't even like a second round pick wasn't even not even close. That wasn't even a feasible thing. People were laughing at you, right? Laughing at you trying to trying to trade away Chris Hogan. For, but I mean, so what do you do? I guess my biggest question right now is I don't mind drafting him and putting him on my team and, and getting some early uh, Hogan production. But I mean. If he is on your team, are you trying to sell him? Or are you buying in, in in the free agent market in existing leagues? What well, you, as as a Hogan owner for multiple years now, is he, do you have to strike right now? Like what? I'm I'm going to have him on my in my on my starting lineup, and I'm going to enjoy the Hogan output. I'm so going you're just going to ride this thing out because I, I promise you, once we get in the season, everyone's going to nobody's going to give you anything. I know that's what I'm saying. Like I, as a I've had oh, well, Edelman's coming back. I've had I've had Hogan. Uh, I've had Hogan <laughs> since he's old. I picked him up off the free agent wire when the when the Patriots picked him picked him up from Hogan from from Buffalo a couple years back in multiple leagues. Just kept grabbing him everywhere I could, and just like you, there is no selling him. Nobody ever gives you anything for the guy, even right. when he was playing well. Maybe you, you could finally strike right now because it's so depleted over there. So I mean, if you had the option, would I mean, you, you can't sell even him get right a Roto now? World blurb going. I mean, I would upset. I would try to make him into something more valuable, I, if I if I could. And I as the guy, I, I consider myself a first round draft pick when it comes to trading. Like I am a top end trader. I consider myself a good. Sure. I, I, I will send you yeah. offers over and over and over and over again, just trying to figure it out and take that from. I can't get nothing. You're a supplemental. I can't first get round anything. Drafter. Can't get anything for Hogan. Well, just like I mean, said, there, yeah. there's nothing you can do with Hogan. There's, I mean, but real on a sidebar. I don't mean to sidebar it here, but I'm going to sidebar it. <laughs> you, I couldn't get anything for Hogan. You can get anything for Hogan. But when you're sending out trades like that, I mean, depending on Hogan, I could send it out to whoever I want, and he wasn't getting properly valued. But there are certain guys who people, you, you send trade to somebody, they laugh at you, you send it to somebody else, and they give you... Snap a, it up. They give, or they, they at least send you back something that... Right keeps the keeps the motor running mm-hmm. so i mean don't be don't be upset with somebody that says you know that you this was a stupid trade or whatever because how many times you get that email being like god damn it they just traded who for who yeah like, you should have sent me that yeah i'd have gave I'd you have more <laughs> yeah well i'd have got up that yeah is that justice mr reed <laughs> no. i mean normally when i send a trade out i send one tra- i send some type of variation to everybody in the league yeah so let's so back to hogan just Look, to test the water with hogan i think I'm fine spending the ADP to put him on my team in a startup. I'm fine trying to sell him if you have him already. But I mean, I I would have I was fine trying to sell him last year. I'm pretty excited about him now. I don't think I'm trying to get rid of him. I'm I'm gonna ride this out. I mean, this is a a 
plug and play piece here. Right. And you might as well just ride that wave if you've been holding him and if you have him, like just rejoice and he played in nine games rejoice. last year. So he's he's sort of like a Gronk where he's probably not gonna play every game, which is something is the reason that I was trying to get rid of him because right. I knew what kind of player he's, he's gonna lay he out, leaves and hurt it that all out there. Yeah. And I'm okay with that, but I was trying to dump him. Not dump him, but if, well, if you're moving him, you're dumping him because nobody's going to give you anything. Right. That's the point. Is we literally couldn't get a third rounder for him last year, trying to sell him so off you before cut down. So we're, s- but if to Jay, what Jay Wayne just said, he's picking him up at ADP in a startup. Like I, he's right there between. There's you know between. He said he's okay with it. It's not maybe his preferred guy. Michael Crabtree eighty six, Aaron Jones eighty seven, Chris Hogan eighty eight, Algular eighty nine, OJ Howard, Gallup, Kenny Galladay, and Anthony Miller. Like there's no I'm. I'm gonna find my catch. Uh, maybe like maybe I'm not gonna find wide receiver five for five or ten weeks of the season. But like I will, I'd rather go trade. I'd rather pick up Emmanuel Sanders on the cheap and grab an Anthony Miller or a Kenny Galladay for my dynasty team than invest in Chris Hogan. Just knowing for the disrespect, because it's only a matter of time for that shoulder gets hurt again and he's back out. Yeah, he's I not mean, gonna I, be in there for long. I'm probably not investing in 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 the startup ADP, and I, I don't think. Jay Wayne was necessarily saying he was investing. Just it's. I mean, I don't think you have point. to take him in eighty eight. I don't. I don't think. Just like you said, if he's disrespected out there everywhere, he's not going to probably go this high in a regular draft. He's a guy that's probably going to fall a little bit. But I mean, yeah, there's some young, shiny objects around here. There's Anthony Miller right there, Kenny Galladay, uh, O.J. Howard, Duke Johnson. I mean, those are guys that Michael Gallup. I, Aguilar, I can see you taking any of those guys over him, but I mean, if you, depending on how you drafted your team, yeah, this is a guy that I, I'm, I'm I really, would, I want on my team right now. This, because he's, the whole thing from this is for me is like I, I would say draft this guy at that ADP because he's probably going to start off somewhere like he did last year and be in that top ten receiver range, but nobody's gonna, everyone's just gonna disrespect him while he's doing so. That's what I'm saying. I could, I don't think that I, I'm not saying he's not going to vastly outproduce this 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 acquisition cost. He like what. Whatever he and the pick eighty eight on average, like he's going to come out there and, and just blow up. You saw it when he got healthy last year, more touchdowns in the playoffs. And, and in twenty seventeen, no twenty sixteen, when he was hurt during the season, he comes back and blows up right. in the playoffs again. And if you're okay knowing what you're getting there and knowing that you're probably going to get great production, there's really nothing wrong with drafting him there. No. Like he's going to come out and produce for you when he's out on the field, typically. Right. Well, you're going to draft somebody in the 80th, 90th, and 100th ADP area. That's going to be a you're going to whiff on a pick anyway. Right. You know, you know, you're not blowing it when you draft draft Chris Hogan. You're going to get the I production. Mean, so you can't sell him for. I couldn't sell him for a second or a third, even a third last year. And I was no, you know. Well, that's would you buy him for a second right now? I'd give I'd give a next year's two if I needed a starter. But that's my point though. If you if you're in the 88 area area and you're buying him over an Anthony Miller, Anthony Miller's like a 110, 112, 2122 type value. You're giving up a basically back in first high end two this year for a rookie who you can't expect to have Anthony Miller in your starting lineup anytime soon and you can plug in Hogan right away right that, that's your trade-off you know like Jay Wayne said it's how you build your team when you get to right. this point in the draft if you need a starter to chase a championship or you want to if you, you know, took a Juju or a Corey Davis up high and, and you wanted some stability you know a little bit later or you maybe gambled on Josh Gordon or something and you're looking for somebody some stability like we're always looking for in Larry Fitz right you well, know, we do. This, I think we do a. Sorry to cut you off. You. I think we do a good job on here. Continue. Like every time this comes up, this types of conversation, we come up, and I think we do a good job of reminding people the startup values versus existing league values. And I wouldn't mind going in. I wouldn't. I would send a two. You probably to Casey's point over and over again. You probably don't even have to pay a two to get him. Maybe the hype's real right now, but the owner might have tried to sell him already and figured out that you couldn't get anything for him last year. Like Casey's saying, I bet if Casey's got him, he'd probably take a three and a four, maybe. But he's no one. He's no. No way he's holding. I'm just because at that point, like I'm just gonna take the production when it's there and ride right. it out. Like yeah, I, I right. know what kind of player I have when he's on the field, and yeah. especially you know in the Patriot system, doing what he's doing, he's gonna do what he does, and like score points when he's on the field. Right. Yeah. Maybe so I'm one just, more of it. Maybe he gets a little bit more respect. I mean, 88's a, f- a, f- a solid ADP there. So yeah. would you sell him for a two? Uh, again, depending on how my team was built, like. I have a team right now with you guys. I wouldn't sell him with it for a two. I got. I mean, it's probably he's he's worth more than a two, pro- most likely. I'd mm-hmm. give up a two to get him. Um, and the way my team's built in that league, like I'm, I actually ended up with a pretty solid core of wide receivers. So I don't really need 
Chris Hogan, and maybe I would have a two, and I currently do not. Own, we haven't drafted yet. I currently don't own a two. Okay. And I wouldn't mind having a okay. two. Okay. Okay. Um, Send Jay Wayne an offer. But live two trade action. Two eleven. It would Ooh, be yes. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to do that. No like, way. I need two two one through two three. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Putting him right here in this little. Because I want to get. I want a shot at Anthony Miller. Right. Why don't you? Or or somebody along those lines to replace this guy of production. Would you? Swap, where it would could you be. If if James Washington slides in the draft, would you? I don't mind. I don't mind that. I don't mind swapping out. Uh, or Naheem Hines. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Interesting, but you probably aren't getting any of those at two eleven. So no, 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 he's not gonna slide that far if he does. For Joyce, you could like have Baker. Said. Yeah, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> good oh, deal. preseason. We're All about right. to see Baker play. So that that's that's the receiver side of this. Uh, I don't know what what what's the good word for what's fallout. Going on Good sandal, luck. sandal, sandal lock. Good luck picking the right guy. Speaking of that, two, sandal gate, <laughs> sandal gate. Thirty seconds. Bulge gate. Bul <laughs> the, bulge gate. The like the is the the Barrios and and um what's his name? Um, I'm drawing a blank too. Riley McCarron and Barrios. Those guys. There's different guys in the community that are picking sides and saying this guy's for sure and you if you're miss if you don't, I don't this hate guy, Barrios at all but we are we're we're not we squad. don't we don't get on here and tell you about guys in, in a way that we're we're not digging around for the I told you so's in two months right so like Riley McCarron might be the guy to get Braxton Barrios might be that body might be the guy to get I'm not going to tell you which one of the, like try to get them both because they're absolutely cheap and see see if you win yeah but like we're, you know, there's some people that'll tell you if you get this guy, you're doing it wrong. If you get this guy, that's the only way to go. Like that's not. I don't think McCarron has an ADP, and Barrios is at 241 in July on right. So DLS zero dollars invested. Right. All right, fair. That's all I wanted to say was. Uh, and I don't wait. mind taking a shot on any of those guys because in most dynasty leagues, they're practice squad material at least yes. for a first season. Mm -hmm. And in some leagues, you can two three years, you can hang on to those guys and let them just hang out down there. Um, so, that, yeah, I'm perfectly OK with that. But I would rather take a shot on some of those other guys like the Dorsets and the Deckers if and try to get a return right now. Yep. I, don't, I don't know if Barrios is getting on the field. Yeah. You know, solid fourth round rookie pick. Well, we're say, this is, you know, we're saying this in the first week of August or McCarron, here, and, I guess in the second, that is. second, third week of the preseason. This we might have an answer. Sure. You know? So you got to sure. pay it. Got It's fluid. It's a fluid situation. You got to keep your eyes open.